Ako po si Rochelle Del Rosario, um, mother ni Alex Xavier Del Rosario. Uh, ginagawa ko po itong video, I'm doing this video um, to somewhat share our experience and uh, our ongoing experience with this very rare disease. Um, and mag almost one month na po uh, kaming nakikipag-battle uh, sa disease na ito. Yung anak po namin, our son, Alex Xavier, or Alex, uh, to his friends, is actually still at the ICU right now. Um, and we hope to this video for some of our family and friends who is very concerned of what's happening to our family. Uh, I hope that this video will help at least get some answers if these are the answers that um, uh, could explain uh, what is happening. Um, babasahin ko po yung unang part ng um, story namin um, at sinulat ko po ito um, to allow me not to be too emotional um, on on this video so for, forgive me I'm currently at my son's room uh, which I'm pretty sure miss na miss na niya um, pero if in case po um, during the course of this video I get emotional I hope you understand um, that just thinking to put this together is very hard already um, but we're also our I, I, I think this is now our purpose um, for sharing uh, our experience because ayoko pong maniwala that there is no purpose of why this is happening to us okay I will I will will start reading um, what I wrote and hopefully um, hopefully makakuha po kayo ng some ideas on where we are right now as I said, I am Rochelle Del Rosario, mother of Alex Xavier Del Rosario. Uh, Alex is 22 years old um, and still in college, um, who is still battling two types of a very rare disease. And it's called, it, it is called HHV6, uh, which is human um, herpes virus 6 and anti-NMDA receptor autoimmune encephalitis. It started last May 11, uh, that's a Thursday, when my son, a student at the University of the Philippines, Diliman, is, um, who's taking up genetic engineering, called us to be picked up because he was experiencing anxiety attacks. His exact words is, uh, during... Uh, when he called called me, his exact words was, Mom, sorry, can you pick me up? Madaming tao dito sa school. And because the GED or GED event, and I'm feeling or starting to feel paralyzed. We immediately rushed to pick him up and told him, Okay, you have to rest. On May 12, which is Friday, I made a decision not to let him go to school. I gave him, uh, I told him to rest and he complied because when I got his temperature nung hinipo ko po siya, um, the temperature was at 38 uh, degrees Celsius. So we gave him paracetamol and told him to sleep. Just thinking na it was due to fatigue. Um, I and my husband went out to do some errands. So, naturally, sabi namin, yung sleep it off. Um, baka pagod ka lang. Kasi nga, that, that school event actually took him two weeks straight of non-stop um, uh, preparation uh, with his uh, classmates. So, he complied naman after taking the paracetamol. And then, me and my husband went on to, to go on our daily errands. Then he called my grand uh he, he called his grandmother yung mother ko um and then he told her to come over and not leave him kasi siya lang mag-isa dito sa house nung time na yon. He said that he's not being himself 
um, but he was trying to be normal. So my mother rushed, he, he lived a couple of blocks away from us, so he rushed here. And then, because hearing, uh, knowing that through text message was very concerning. Uh, I believe this is the first day that he was hearing voices too and hallucinating. All throughout the day, he was feverish. Ah, sinat-sinat lang siya. Pero naglalaro na yung temperature niya around 37, 38, but never 39. He started to be delirious and agitated. Just for background purposes, and those who know Alex, Alex is a very polite, well-mannered, um, and very patient person. He's highly introverted though, that keeps, you know, his emotions to himself. Um, highly introverted po kasi yung anak ko. So, during this day, uh, we're seeing the opposite of Alex. Um, he started cursing and started to tell some obscene uh, stories um, that no parent would want to hear. Hindi ko na po isi-share kung ano yung mga yun, pero it was totally not my son. It's not our son telling those stories. Um, he started, you know, uh, telling us over and over that he is hearing voices. Um, and then at night time, he started to panic um, and beating himself, uh, beating him, his head. Ginaganon po niya yung, utak, yung ulo niya ng head niya. Sabi niya, um, and he told us, Mommy, I'm going crazy. I am not this person, and I'm trapped inside. I'm afraid. And pasigaw po niya yung ginagawa. Um, obviously, it, it bothered us. Um, I started to get afraid as well. My husband as well. Um, and sabi niya, when he was crying, um, and in in delirium talaga as in nag ano siya parang nagpapanik talaga siya there are moments that he will stop lagi niya sasabi ayun ayun and ito po itsura niya talaga lagi niya sasabi and and with a flick of a hand sasabi niya ayun ayun so parang may nag on and off switch um or something uh, to that effect um and this already concerned concerned us very deep deeply. So, um, that continued throughout the rest of the day uh, and night. Um, and at midnight, we decided to bring him to NCMH or the National Center for Mental Health um, to have him checked. Okay? Uh, marami po nagtatanong, bakit sa, N sa National Mental Health ninyo dinala agad? Obviously, when you see that there is a change of behavior, um, that hospital in our head could explain what is happening. So, at midnight, dinala namin siya doon. We stayed there for six hours uh, for psychiatric evaluation. Uh, and we left there after six uh, hours with a diagnosis that my son is bipolar. Uh, he was given antipsychotic drugs uh, to be taken once a day during night uh, para daw makatulog. Um... And then, in, I don't know if I am in denial uh, or call it mother, mother's instinct. I just cannot accept the fact that in the course of one to two days, my son will become just bipolar. Okay? Um, however, um, while I do not accept that, um, how unfortunately our family background and history will play a huge role on me just parang evaluating maybe there's some truth behind it unfortunately some of our relatives um, are diagnosed as bipolars so on may 13 which is saturday alex was given a small dose of antipsychotic as i mentioned um, but is still feverish. Talagang may sinat, may lagnat, parang ganun ang ano niya all throughout the day, which is already Saturday. Um, his delusions and hallucinations continues. Um, yung hallucination po niya is 
very hard to share uh, the story. Uh, pero ang hallucination niya is there is someone hurting him physically. Okay? Um, so, we continue with all ears and eyes focus on him on every moment that he does. Um, and he was on his room the whole day. May 14, which is Sunday. This is Mother's Day. We woke up. I gave him porridge kasi hindi siya kumain nung gabi. Um, he took a bath. Um, nagbrush ng teeth as normal. And we were discussing how to handle uh, his bipolar situation. In fact, nakausap ko siya very, ano pa, very, very sane, I should, if I should describe it, very sane pa siya nun. Um, and Alex, being a very intelligent person, um, nag-research na daw siya sa condition niya, and maybe he did this through the night, kasi hindi siya makatulog talaga, despite of the antipsychotic drug that was given to him, that was supposed to put him down to sleep. Um, and then, um, sabi niya, I'm willing to go to therapy, mommy, if I am really bipolar. Um, pero, he was easily agitated. Uh, parang on and off siya, parang nagagalit. Tapos, babalik ulit sa sarili niya and so forth. And then, he cried. Iyak ng iyak siya. Um, while telling us, he's losing it. Sabi niya, maybe I'm not bipolar. Maybe it's all in my head. I'm losing it. I'm going crazy. Um, and then he went to my room nahiga pa sa tabi ko he went to Adam's room, yung brother niya nahiga pa siya doon uh, he left his things, yung uh, ring niya yung bracelet niya, iniwan niya doon sa, sa bedside ng brother niya and then um, sabi niya, I might not make it I might be dying so obviously we were calming him down, saying na, no, bakit ganyan ka magsilita? Why are you saying that? Um, and then, he went down, and because it was Mother's Day, my, my husband bought me a cake, um, and then may card doon, and sabi niya, ang sabi ng husband ko, oh Alex, it's Mother's Day, um, can you write the message to the card? And, when we saw the card, para lang siyang scribble, Pero walang, walang words, walang letters. As in, scribble lang sabi niya. Ayan, sinulat ko na Happy Mother's Day. And then, um, he immediately screamed, Dad, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. He was screaming like that. Na, Dad. Tapos niyakap niya yung dad niya. Niyakap niya yung dad niya. And because he screamed, I went down. Um, pagbaba ko, uh, he was already hugging my husband, yung daddy niya. So, I also hug him at the back. So, parang naka-sandwich siya sa amin na niyayakap namin, pinapacify namin siya. Sabi niya, so, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So, that is when the first seizure happened. I would like to thank the heavens na nag-seizure siya sa kamay namin. Yeah, sa kamay namin siya, wala siya sa, hindi siya nabagok, hindi siya, hindi, nada, hindi umano yung head niya. Um, I am also very lucky that me and my husband have some first aid training um, in our past. Um, and we know what to do. Uh, we didn't panic. Um, what we did try to do was put him on the ground, only holding his head. Kasi as in talagang seizure na, full body seizure, nag-violet siya. Yung mouth niya was bubbly. And this time, it's not white bubbles. It's not the saliva in itself. It's blood. Unfortunately, nakagat na pala niya yung dila niya. So, there's a big laceration on um, on his tongue. Because we, we, we don't have something for him to bite on. We were just concerned protecting his head. In fact, yung buong body niya, inalaw na lang namin mag, ano, mag twist sa, sa floor. So, he was flat on the ground only me holding his head kasi talagang gumaganon yung yung head niya um all his limbs are twisted uh paan niya twisted uh, the whole face were like talagang full twist ang ang leg niya with you know with purple blue talaga 
And I was, uh, minimas ko yung uh, chest niya for him to breathe back. So, it took, it that, that took 5 minutes um, in my assessment. But it, for me, it's like, tagal. Pero 5 minutes lang. Pero, it was the longest 5 minutes seeing my son, you know, in, in full seizure. And I know, uh, I was afraid because I know what what is what what is happening. Um, he will be starting to lose some of the neurons in his brain. Yun ang automatic na nagpumasok si isip ko. But we started calling family members to help us um, get to the hospital uh, faster. So after five minutes, he was back and he didn't recall what what happened. Sabi lang niya, ma'am, what happened? Why am I in the floor? Nasa floor. Bakit siya nasa floor? So, I told him, do not rush back to get up. May hilo ka, sabi ko. Just, ano, uh, just lay there. Sabi ko, let's wait for uh, t- your tito John John to go. We're going to the hospital. Sabi niya, uh, I feel dizzy. Uh, pero yung, the, the way he was saying it, garbled na um yung yung speech na very nagmamumble na lang siya then um when he came back talaga he has no recollection so i told him j- just ano just uh relax and this time um we rushed to the hospital um and then uh, that hospital is UERM for some reason um, doon kami dinala ng, I don't know, ng heavenly bodies, probably angels, uh, who is supporting us. Um, and simply because then, uh, the day nga, before that, uh, I already asked the National uh, Mental Health kung ano yung mga hospitals that have a very good psychiatric department. Kasi nga, we're ready to accept na bipolar si, si Alex and we want him to have a, a, a private therapy session um, in, a, in a institution. Kasi kung doon kami si National Mental Health, masyadong maraming tao um, and mag-aantay kami na matagal. Tinapat naman kami ng, ng hospital na yun na if you really want to be here because this is a public hospital, uh, maglalaan kayo ng 8 hours just to queue in or just to fall in line. So, we went to UERM. And I think, and I want to believe until now, that is the smartest decision we have ever made uh, during this, this ordeal. And uh, if God is truly and lovingly, you know, supporting us, um, and I know He, he, he did, dun niya kami din ala. So we went there um and during the travel it's a 30 minute travel from our house in Caloocan uh, this is in Quezon City um during the travel Alex was complaining of uh migraine type of headache sabi sakit ng ulo ko ma'am sabi niya ganun parang mig- migraine 10 times so, my brother, nasa gitna namin siya, tsaka ako. Nimas ko lang ulo niya. I can't do anything. Sabi ko, don't worry, we're already near the hospital. So, um, during the travel, and since it's still COVID time, and medyo tumataas yung COVID, during the triage in ER, we were being evaluated. And obviously, meron na kaming certificate galing sa National Mental Health, sabi ko, if this could help, right? Because, sabi, ano ba nangyari sa pasyente? Uh, sabi ko, nagka-seizure kanina, mga around 9 a.m. Um, so, we went here. Sabi ko, tsaka may lagnat. So, chin- chinik naman siya may lagnat. Sabi niya, baka may COVID. Sabi nung, ano, maybe has COVID. Um, sabi ko, uh, this a triage, nagmamakaawa kami kasi they told us uh, they're fully uh, fully book uh, that day they were forcing us to go back uh, the following day um, and they were suggesting na because may pre-diagnosis na bipolar 
uh, doon kami sa psychiatric uh, department na outpatient department pupunta. I begged, uh, like any mother would do, I beg sabi ko, kahit COVID test lang, please, um, gawin na natin ngayon. Kasi kung ibabalik ko yung anak ko sa bahay, I don't know what to do um, pag nag-seizure siya, ul siya ulit. And I also beg to talk to a doctor, um, kahit dun lang sa COVID ward na magpa-assist na ano gagawin ko pag nag-seizure ulit yung anak ko, di ba? Ako iuuwi ko ulit. Because I don't know what to do. So, um, they agreed to have COVID test. And, minuto lang naman yun. So, he was negative. So, sabi niya, hindi nila ma-associate yung lagnat sa nanggagaling yung lagnat. Siguro na awa or I don't know kung may bumulong na mga anghel sa nagtatrayage because I was really begging na I I'm willing to wait there overnight ayoko iuwi yung ano ko I don't want to bring him home without really fully testing him um and and it was it was not hard for a mother to beg. Kasi gagawin mo lahat talaga para lang sa anak mo, di ba? So, I think, you know, the person in the ER um, was touched by how how I was begging for a, a check-up. Kahit check-up lang, sandaling check-up lang sa doktor. So, he called the doctor. Uh, unang doctor na tinawagan nila was on the psychiatry side. But during, so kinausap ako, um, but during that conversation, he was telling me na um, bipolar ang diagnosis, pero ba, may seizure, bakit may lagnat? Sabi ko, I don't know po. Sabi niya, oh, you're still in the COVID ward, kasi may COVID ward yung hospital, yung ER. Sabi ko, nandito pa po kami. Sabi niya, sige, uh, we'll go down. Um, so, that was the first sign of relief sa akin. Na at least someone will look at Alex. Pagbaba po nila, there are two doctors who came to see us. Uh, one is the, from the psychiatry uh, team and one is from the neuro uh, uh, team, uh, neurologist uh, team. The first doctor, I will not mention the names of the doctor right now for their privacy as well. Uh, but I hope in, in due time, we'll be able to really thank them. But the first doctor who came in said, Mommy, um, can you tell me the background and the story? Okay, sabi ko, this is as far as I could remember. So, Inulit ko kung anong story namin na binigay namin as far as what we know happened and so forth. Sabi niya, ang bilis naman. Sabi niya, ang bilis. Overnight lang, bipolar siya. Sabi ko, oo kasi yun po yung diagnosis namin. Sabi niya, what, what made you believe that he's not bipolar? Sabi ko, I might not know my child fully, pero sabi ko hindi naman siguro masamang ako in or i-claim na alam ko yung behavior ng mga anak ko. Sabi ko, hindi hindi ko maisip na magiging ganyan siya overnight. And what gave in is, bakit siya nagsisisure? Or bakit siya nagsisure? That time, ang, ang, ang goal ko lang, ang goal lang namin mag-asawa is to have answers bakit siya nag-seizure. Not even, where, again, sabi ko nga, because of our family history, we were, we were ready to accept just in case kung bipolar nga siya. Sabi niya, this behavioral changes, sabi niya ganun, we've seen this. Sabi ko, Doc, Help me understand, bakit po neurologist ang nasa harapan ko? Bakit hindi po psychiatrist? Yung psychiatry team nandun po, doctor din siya. Sabi niya, we have some suspicions, but we need to do it immediately. Ang bilis po ng pangyayari, dumating po kami sa ospital ng mga 10. 
Around 11 and 12 ng tanghali, we were accommodated. At 1 p.m., we're already being prepared for numerous tests. And ito po yung una namin pinagpapasalamat talaga. And I hope itong, itong early detection and diagnosis ni Alexis or Alex will help him. Um, will help him. <laughs> Wala pa po kami sa recovery stage, unfortunately. So, bakit po sinabi namin yung, yung event na yon is very hopeful. Kasi later on, um, as I mentioned, yung dalawang na-detect na uh, meron si Alex is very very rare and delibitating na talagang hindi nyo po ma-imagine kung ano magiging result. So, during that conversation with the doctor, I was automatically asked, sabi niya, Mami, the test is not simple. There will be numerous tests or probably hundreds of tests. Ready po ba kayo? So, that time, hindi ko alam kung ang tinatanong ba niya sa akin, ready ba ako mentally? Ready ba ako financially? Ready ba ako emotionally? Pero, Obviously, the answer is yes. Gawin natin lahat. Anong gagawin natin? Saan tayo magsisimula? Sabi niya, um, medyo mahaba ang queue. Sabi niya, gaya, mahaba daw yung pila. Pero, we will admit Alex. And that was the first sign of relief na yes, at least di mo ko may pauuwiin. Kasi hindi ko alam kung pag umuwi ka, may anong gagawin ko, right? Sabi ko, sige doc, thank you. The first one was a physical test. Tinignan si Alex, as in buo, buong body, as in buong phys physical niya. Uh, and that that is inclusive of some invasive uh, test. Like, you know, uh, uh, um, anus test, scrotum test, and, and so forth. Those tests, I do not understand why. There were basic tests like the CBC, your blood test, urine, x-ray. Ito yung mga unang ginawa sa kanya. Uh, during the course of the day, uh, luckily, I don't know how lucky we are, but ang sabi may semi-private room. The semi-private room was about six uh, six beds all together in one room. We took it, kahit kortina lang yung pagitan ng mga pasyente, we took it. Um, sabi ko, pila na lang natin eventually to the private room. Um, um, which by the way, took us uh, mga three days pa to transfer to a private room and I'll explain why that is important. So, during during May 14, yung mga basic tests po nagawa na kay Alex. Um, and then, um, as I mentioned kanina, we were being asked to do a lumbar tap. Lumbar tap is getting the, um, spinal fluid, uh, obviously sa, sa spine, um, and that is very painful. Meron, um, uh, ito po ay similar sa mga na si cesarean, only this time palabas yung fluid instead of pa, sa cesarean pa, paloob eh, diba? kasi nag inject ka ng, ng medicine sa loob ito po is kukuha ng um, uh, nerve or spinal fluid and, and that day in itself uh, which is May 14 nakuha po ng, ng lumbar tap si Alex nung gabi mga around 9, sorry mga 10 ng gabi ganun po kabilis ang um, ang ginawang test. The following day, which, which is May 15, uh, we already have one of the few results that will shock our lives. And this is the beginning of a very life-changing experience for our family. Ito po yung hindi pa tapos na story. Ah. Ongoing na story po ito. So, pagpatawad nyo po kung during your viewing or panonood ninyo parang bakit wala pang wala pang ending yung yung kwento na to kasi wala pa po talagang ending di pa po kami nakarating doon so 
As I mentioned, lumbar tap, we were being explained and told na hindi lang ito yung test. Marami pa. Sabi ko, sige, gawin natin lahat. And during this day, si Alex po ay conscious, semi-conscious. Meaning, alam pa po niya yung nangyayari sa paligid niya. He was told na, okay, uh, Alex, yung ulo mo, lagay natin sa, ano mo, ibe-bend down, parang ganyan, yung ulo, tsaka yung paa, ibe-bend down para makuha yung fluid sa spine. I know how painful it is because ilang beses ako na cesarean, ilang beses ako na na operahan. And every time a fluid is being, you know, taken or ano sa likod ko, masakit yung likod ko hanggang ngayon. Paano pa siya, di ba? Ang sabi, the procedure will only take 15 minutes. Unfortunately, kay Alex po, it took 30 minutes. Ito po ay yung unang lumbar tap niya. Yung unang araw. The following day, we were told a very heartbreaking news, which is Alex has a very rare disease. And just hearing rare made me afraid. My husband is also afraid. Kasi rare. So, ibig sabihin, ano, may, may, meron bang medicine for that? And will he survive? So, sabi ko, ano yung sakit? HHV6 um, uh, virus. Sabi ko, ano yung, ano yun? This is the first time I'm hearing it. So, sabi, human herpes virus. Just hearing herpes, nag-shoot like, sa mind ko, what? Sabi ko, of how little I know, obviously, how, how little I know of this virus. Sabi ko, ha? Ano yun? Sexually transmitted ba yun? Obviously, my son is already 22 years old, right? Kahit ba sabihin ko, sabihin ko or i-deny ko na wala siyang sexual encounters or what, I can't, I don't know, right? The minute he steps out of the house, I don't know what he's doing, right? So, I was assured that it was not, pero we have to undergo an HIV test and a uh, viral count test just to confirm. It's so hard breaking to do that pero kasi hoda i don't know I, I i don't care i i want to know i want to understand how and what ang dumapo sa kanya what what caused this virus to come to him it was later na lang during the course of our ordeal that obviously i researched what that is right and let let me just read what what this is for those that don't know um human herpes virus 6 is a virus known for causing highly contagious infection rosola infantum and has been associated with causing encephalitis in pediatric patient and less commonly in adults so imagine niyo po mas more daw siya sa infant kaysa sa adults and my 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 son is already an adult. Uh, regardless of pa however, regardless of patient's age, the primary HHV6 infection could be complicated by neurological scoli, including encephalitis and, and acute uh, bis uh, bisapic seizures syndrome. Um, it will uh, occur in adults as primary infection or reactivation. However, immunocompromised uh, patients, most especially in transplant patients, um, are most likely to get uh, affected. So, imagine, tinatry po namin intindihin yung scientific um, um, definition. Obviously, this is the first time we've heard it. And even pronouncing some of this when we were reading it or even the spelling is very hard to comprehend na sa amin at our level. We are very lucky that the UERM doctors were very patient and kind and very empathetic to us explaining what this virus is. I mentioned, di ba, dalawang doctor lang yung una naming na-meet na yung sa, sa psychiatry team and uh, neuroscience team. This time, an infectious disease doctor met us. Um, that doctor explained to us what HHV6 is. Um, to put it simply sa 
sa kaya ng kapasidad ng utak namin na unawain. Um, his simple explanation on this virus is there are viruses coming from measles, chicken pox, mumps, or German measles uh, during nung bata tayo. And this DNA could be uh, sleeping DNA, virus DNAs that are stuck in our system. Ito yung mga hindi lumabas, baka natulog, naging ano lang sila. And then, na-reactivate nung bumaba yung immunity um, ni Alex. Uh, kaya sinabing immunocompromised. Pero, ang mga immunocompromised are only those that have either huge operation or transplant or meron ngang AIDS or HIV. And that is the reason why they told us, let's see if there's HIV or a viral load uh, to Alex's uh, immunity. Um, ito yung mga questions na very hard to answer. Kasi ang mga tanong is, how well do you know your son? How, how well do you know his sexual uh, activities? How on earth would I answer that, right? <laughs> And I'm not, me and my husband are not prepared to answer that, right? Simply because it's it's not an usual discussion that you will do with your children. Most especially to, you know, a teenager or turning adult um, child. So, sabi ko, I don't know. <laughs> sabi ko, I could give you all his medical history, but not that, right? Yung activity niya yun, I don't know, right? Sabi ko, pero, sabi ko, we're willing to... We we're willing to go to the bottom of it. Please test him. And then, obviously, the test came out. And the test came out negative. However, meron pang... Kasi, pag nagkaroon ka nito, HIV na to, ano, uh, hindi mo naman agad na... Hindi mo agad madedetect yan eh. Usually, magre-resurface yan mga, ano pa, after 3 to 4 weeks or or even 6 months. Um, and that is the reason why after uh, mag-isang buwan na po kami sa hospital, fifth, fourth to fifth week na po kami, um, nagpa-test po kami ulit uh, and we're waiting for the result. But the first result, both for uh, uh, HIV and viral count that confirms or denies if that is the cause of HHV6 is negative. Negative po si Alex doon. Um, nag-physical check po din kami, uh, both sa scrotum niya, sa penis niya, sa ano niya, wa wala pong indicators there, wala pong, uh, normally magkakaroon daw yan ng mga lesions or sores and so forth, wala po malinis, uh, pati po sa, uh, anus niya. So, palaisipan po, it's a big mystery how in the world he he got a very low immunity okay so how did we found out na he has a really low immunity there is another test called the cd4 test or the t cell test t cell count uh, may range po yon and unfortunately di ko na po matandaan yung range pero as far as i could remember If the range, the normal range is between 25 to, let's say, uh, 80, ang, ang T, CD4 T cell count ni Alex was only about 22. Hindi po siya umabot dun sa 25. Meron pa pong isa which is um, CD8, uh, CD8 which is uh, yung yung pag-count po ng natural killer and regulates our cells uh, mababa rin po siya doon uh, hindi rin po umapot CD8 is an antigen self-surface gly glycoprotein found in most cytotic uh, T lymphocytes that mediates efficient cell to cell interaction within the immune system. So, mababa po talaga. Ngayon, marami po nagtatanong sa amin, mga friends, family members that are concerned, bakit bumaba ang immunity ni Alex, right? 
marami pong dahilan, uh, marami pong possible reason. At until now, we are not been able to identify the what made it to that point. Um, marami pong sa iba, baka stress sa school, baka, baka sobrang pagod. Probably po, pwede rin po sa nutrition. Um, pero those that knows us, and si Alex po nagbabitamins pa yan, ang, ang medical, medical history na tinanong sa amin. By the way, during that first three days namin sa hospital, um, it's more of finding the history of the patient. So, tinanong ako, komple kompleto ba ang vaccine ng bata or ng pasyente mula pagkabata? Obviously, may answer is yes. Firstborn son ko yan eh. Right? Um, sabi ko lang, ang wala lang niya is hepatitis A. Yun lang. Um, okay, gumanon sila. And then, ano yung mga sakit? Sabi ko, nung bata, sabi ko, ang na-observe ko lang is yung anak ko nagkaroon ng measles and chicken box ng mumps. Uh, walang German measles. Uh, pero hindi nagpo-progress ng 7 days ang sakit. Very short period lang, 3 to 4 days, yun na, tapos na. Um, tinanong ko may mga allergies, sabi ko nagpa-allergy test kami sa Makati Med noon, nagpa-patch test kami, um, simply because hindi, yung measles niya hindi nagtutuloy. So, akala is, ano, ano siya, um, um, meron lang siyang allergy. Kaya nagpa-allergic test kami. So, wala siyang allergy sa kahit na ano, mapa-food, mapa-external uh, or, or chemical uh, in nature. Um, tinatanong ko, sakitin ba yung bata nung, nung bata siya? Sakitin ba si Alex nung bata siya? If he's two week, he, he was sickly. No, we told them, no. In fact, this is the first major hospitalization of Alex. Sabi ko nga, we were, we were very lucky during his childhood that we would never have to go back and forth to the hospital. Unlike my second child na nagkaroon ng pneumonia during his third week uh, of his life. Sabi ko, walang pneumonia yan. Hindi, nag, hindi nagkaroon ng, ng, ng TB. This is the first major hospitalization. So, all of that information, whether it helped or not, um, we, we, we gave everything. But despite that, we were still being questioned. Because obviously, people lie and people would not recall and remember. Pero ako, mala, ma, I'm, I'm, I'm very, very strong in recalling the events on, on my children's life. I might not recall what I did probably <laughs> to myself or to my husband, but I'm a very hands-on parent. I'm a very hands-on mom. I'm a not, I'm not, I, I don't want to admit I'm a helicopter mom, but maybe I am. So, going back, ano pa yung mga tests na ginawa namin uh, after lumbar tap? He had a CT scan. The CT scan shows no inflammation. Uh, but it was for for the doctors they want to go further to an MRI with um with contrast ito yung yung dye uh, na pinapasok sa loob para makita yung uh, lighting ng ng mga um tawag dito mga movement sa brain uh, so we had CT scan MRI EEG uh, TB test Kasi baka daw merong natutulog or, or um, uh, sleeping t tuberculosis. So, we, that, we have that. CD, the TP, DB test is also inconclusive, unfortunately. So, it's not a yes, it's not a no. Um, maybe we will have to do that again. Pero, uh, we had that. Uh, we have multiple and repeated CBCs. Uh, kasi yung white blood cell niya, that is natural fighter for infections that are coming in, uh, mababa din. So, they are wondering why. Um, he has chest CT scan to just fully check kung meron bang 
uh, pneumonia or whatever um nagkaroon din ng scrotum ultrasound because apparently um some of the encephalitis most especially what Alex has the anti NMDA receptor uh, autoimmune encephalitis is triggered by tumors so hindi ko alam kung matutuwa ba akong wala siyang tumor kasi we were told na kung may tumor tatanggalin niya yung tumor gagaling na siya well i mean gagaling it's a different type of of recovery pero nevertheless sabi nila pag tinanggal yung tumor kasi it why is this rare for Alex it's rare because uh, the ratio of male to female having anti NMDR um encephalitis is 1 is to 2 1 male to 2 females and most most of the time the female uh, patient who has anti NMDA receptor encephalitis has tumors in their reproductive system or in in their ovary per se so scrotum test uh, so scrotum ultrasound wala rin pong nakita uh, we have multiple uh, x-ray kasi apparently they want to make sure that Alex is not um, building pneumonia. Which is by the way, that's another onset of the events um, on on Alex's um, situation. Uh, meron din po kami mga tests for tumor markers. Uh, PSA, PAP. Yung PSA is prostate specific uh, antigen. Meron din po kami PAP, pros, uh, prostatic acid phosphate. I cannot pronounce it even uh, kung gaano pa karaming tumor test ang tinignan. Lahat po yon negative. Um, is that something that we are blessed or dapat ipagpasalamat ba namin yun? Yes. Uh, simply because at least hindi hindi kami multiple hindi hindi multiple yung inaarrest namin okay um pagpasensyahan niyo na po kung sometimes yung kwento ko is jumping from one event to another uh, simply because ang hirap po talagang ipaliwanag yung ordeal namin in 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 such in, in such an order because ang hirap po talaga nung halos mag one month na po kami uh, sa sitwasyon na to. So, um, may mga nagtatanong po, so, dalawang rare disease ang nakuha ng anak mo. Sabay ba niya itong nakuha? Did he get it simultaneously? We want to believe that the virus or the infection actually led and caused uh, the other uh, it, the encephalitis, the autoimmune encephalitis. Uh, we were told by the doctor that in some cases, when the tumor is not present, uh, the viral infection actually could trigger um, the autoimmune. Okay? So, ano naman po, marami pong autoimmune encephalitis. Ano po yung nakuha ni Alex? Ang nakuha po niya is called NMDA encephalitis. Uh, and what is that? Uh, this is a misdirected immune response causing inflammation and swelling in the brain uh, or the encephalitis in itself. The NMDA receptors help neurons to communicate. An immune response directed at these receptors can affect thinking, memory, mood, consciousness, and breathing. These symptoms can be very serious and get worse over time. I will I will share what that means for for Alex. Um, as as my story was unraveling to all of you, meron po siyang behavioral change, which is paranoia, hallucination, and aggression. Lahat po yon napakita ni Alex. Meron po siyang cognition because when he's being asked hindi po siya makasagot ng tama sa some of the questions that were being asked to him. He has memory deficit. Sometimes during the course of our first week at the hospital, uh, the only person he knows is me and yung daddy niya. Uh, the rest of the doctors, the nurses, even though repeatedly din niya nakikita, hindi po niya kilala and, and wala siya nakikilala. Even 
when we mention Adam, yung brother niya, he does not recall that. Uh, may speech disorder, nagmamambol po siya ng uh, salita niya. May loss of consciousness din po kami. There were some times that he will parang suddenly collapse on his bed na parang unconscious siya. Tapos may moments na babalik, babalik yung consciousness niya. Uh, may movement disorder po si Alex. Yung rhythmic motion with arms and legs. Um, abnormal face and mouth. Like, nagganyan po siya. As in, it was... How do I describe it? Um, it's like watching The Exorcist the movie. Unraveling in real life in front of you. That's how horrifying our experience is. Yun po ang close, closest, hindi po ako nag o o I have videos. I, I don't know how to share it because it's so, so painful to have a look at it. Pero yun po ang closest sa description na describe ko para po kayo nanonood ng The Exorcist. Pero nangyayari sa anak mo. And that is so painful. <laughs> Another symptoms of this is seizure. And then, yung autonomic dysfunction niya. Um, on the third, third to fourth day, uh, namin, we were transferred already to a private uh, room. Um, pinilit po namin talaga kasi yung first two, three days ni Alex sa, sa semi-private, he was uh, very uncooperative. Um, he was having seizure on that uh, place then. Um, and he was screaming. Um, and this scream or scream of of help and and he was saying, para daw nasa end siya ng tunnel. This is how he describes it the best that he could. Sabi niya, Mommy, I'm losing all of you. You're at the end of the tunnel. I'm at the end of the other end of the tunnel. I hear your voices, but I don't see you. I'm afraid. <laughs> Obviously, hindi namin alam magagawin namin, right? But we were told that these are part of the um, autoimmune. So, how did we found out about the autoimmune? Nung, as I mentioned, the first day uh, namin, uh, May 14, uh, he had a lumbar tap, right? Um, and that is for checking all the virus and so forth. On the fourth day, when we were transferred to the private room, we were re the doctor requested us for another lumbar tap. Akala namin 30 minutes ulit. No, it took, that took one and a half hours because hindi makakuha ng fluid sa spine ni Alex. It was bloody. It was painful. Pero sabi ko, anak, injure it. Injure it kasi the doctor cannot afford to, you know, to make a mistake on your, on your spine. But we need that. We need the, the, the nerve, I mean, the spinal fluid. Because we want to understand bakit yung behavioral changes mo nag, ano pa rin, nagpo-progress. Um, luckily, after one and a half hours, uh, nakakuha, and nakita namin dun sa tube, may tube kasi, na talagang sumirit siya, talagang it's tight, and the doctor said, oh, there's pressure in in Alex's head, may pressure. So, that, that is causing, um, by the way, during this time, nagbabulge out na yung mata ni Alex, yung right eye niya, nagbabulge out. As in, talagang lumuluwa siya sa socket. Um, and we were wondering why. Naisip lang namin, associated siya sa mga seizures na nang, nakikita namin. Uh, we were told that there is pressure on, on his head. Um, so, another set of medication was given, and after, after that, um, after that medication, humupa yung, uh, yung eyes ni, ni Alex, but the seizure still remains. Um, so, after the lumbar tap, after two days, we were told that it was confirmed, uh, that he got NMDA receptor, NMDAR, 
um, autoimmune encephalitis. Uh, maybe you were wondering, oh, dag MRI na, hindi pa rin ba nakita dun sa MRI and so forth. In fact, the MRI is is only to confirm and see if there are still swelling on some of the other, or tumors that is in the brain. Right? Unlike kasi, unlike kasi, uh, the situ this situation kasi, it's more of the neurons uh, or that network of neurons na na, na inflame uh, or na inflame or na mamaga. Um, so the MRI is showing na walang tumor, walang ibang inflammation outside the yung lining ng brain. Pero dun mismo sa brain in itself there is an inflammation that causes all of this um, and that confirms all of the all of what we, we are seeing uh, with uh, Alex so uh, we were told that there are five stages of the autoimmune uh, the NMDR autoimmune uh, phase may stages daw to so merong prodromal phase ito yung you're starting to lose uh, consciousness. Uh, you're, you're starting to lose um, yung cognitive uh, side of things. Yung hindi ka na makasagot ng tama sa mga very basic questions. And then there is a psychotic phase. As I described it uh, to you, there is an unresponsive phase. Yung hindi siya nagre-respond pag tinatawag mo siya or para siyang nakatingin sa inyo pero stare of of sa kawalan of nothingness and then there is a hyperkinetic face ito yung talagang full seizure uh, full body movements na talagang aggressive in nature um and unfortunately this is the also the time na yung mga involuntary movements of the mouth, of the hands, of the feet, uh, of the head, lahat po yun nandun sa hyperkinetic stage na yun. And this is the most prolonged and crucial stage uh, of all. Yung sumunod po doon is... Um, road to recovery na daw po. Parang ganun. Pero... This disorder is usually severe and can be fatal, but potentially, again, potentially reversible. Yun po ang hope namin na potentially ma-reverse and makabalik po si Alex sa kanya pong pinagdadaanan ngayon. Um, during, during this stage, um, sa two weeks po namin, we need to... Um, physically tie Alex to the bed. So, both arms, legs uh, niya. Uh, there was a time po na, na pati full body kasi talagang gusto niyang, gusto niyang tumalon sa bed. Um, wala po kami magawa just to physically restrain him. Um, kami dalawa ng daddy niya who were there on the, on the private room. It was both physically exhausting for us, mentally exhausting, financially exhausting because of all the laboratories and tests that we need to undergo just to have the right diagnosis and right medication. Um, and I could say, I, I, I firmly believe we are in the right hospital. Um, there are only a few hospitals that have experienced. It was unfortunate to learn that ito pong period of time na to, there is one other patient, um, which is female patient, in the same hospital that they are treating. Pero magkaiba sila ng encephalitis. Um, um, magkaiba sila ng, ng different yung diagnosis. I mean, different yung set of virus and uh, encep reason for encephalitis nung other patient but because of that there is a baseline for them in treatment uh, in diagnosis and treatment so um uh, again we're still lucky pinagpapasalamat pa, pin, nagpapasalamat din namin yung mga 
mga wins na yun. To be quite honest, I will never curse this situation to anyone, even to my most, you know, yung kaaway ko, no? Hindi ko po ito pwedeng i-curse kahit, kahit na sino. Ang hirap pong i-handle nitong sitwasyon na to, and we're not even, even close to seeing Alex, you know, recovering. Um, to date po, um, I could say, nasa ICU pa po si Alex. Alex is still in the ICU. Um, he was in somewhat induced coma uh, for several days. Hindi po namin alam kung kailan siya mag completely awake. And why do we have to do that? Um, we need to do that because um, the new medicines that are coming into him is is putting his system down. Uh, by the way, uh, sorry ha, again, I'm, I'm jumping from one storyline to another. I'm, I'm just trying to recall the sequence. Um, when we were on the regular, uh, sorry, private room, regular room, we were told that we need to queue in to the ICU or sa UARM, they call it the CCU or critical care unit. We asked them why, because eventually, uh, as part of the stage of the autoimmune, he will have hard time breathing on his own. And that happened actually already. Um, Alex is intubated in a ventilator right now to help him breathe. Um, because the muscles um, that allows us to breathe normally, he have lost it. Um, obviously, I asked if there's a recovery uh, for that. Um, the answer is yes. Uh, most patients, and when I asked, me being you know a data-driven person, I asked, what's the percentage of those people able to recover to breathe on their own? I was told it's only 80%, right? Um, the other 20% will be on a vegetative state. Um... But hopefully, our hopes is that we've, we've arrested uh, the condition of Alex early for to give him a chance for to be part of the 80% who had recovered breathing on their own and not being on the vegetative state. Sabi ko, Lord, ang bigat naman nito. Blow by blow. One by one mo binibigay sa amin yung, yung possibilities of the situation of Alex. Uh, at the same time, I'm thanking God because He had prepared us. He, ha he had allowed us time to do our research or, or you know, our, our read-throughs so that when the doctor approached us, it was just a confirmation or a validation of what is happening. Yes po. We, we were doing our research kasi wala pong makapag walang mapagsabi sa amin. We have very good friends who had directed us with some, you know, uh, real Filipinos that have experienced this unfortunately. I would like to mention one of the mother. Uh, now, maybe we will be, you know, lifelong friends. Yung son niya also has an autoimmune um, encephalitis. Uh, was hospitalized for six months, but had recovered and still in the road of recovery. And by the way, for those friends of ours and family members who's asking, oh, makaka-recover naman pala, right? There's a recovery, there's hope. Um, the word recovery for people with encephalitis is quite different from any other illness, no? A any other uh, sickness that we know, right? Uh, the brain is very complex. Um, a, a, a damage in the brain is very hard to fix. It takes years and years, no? From formative age to, you know, to adulthood. Lalo na si Alex. 
uh, to get all the you know the the wirings <laughs> the connectors um form so imagine mo kung masira siya magiging iba po magiging iba yung definition ng recovery <laughs> at some point of this four to five weeks ordeal that we have i don't even know the date anymore we were even told to you know to brace ourselves because if alex would not breathe on his own obviously we obviously we have to make one tough decision right I I told the doctors, no matapang ano ako my 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 son is a fighter until and I until and unless I see him, um, you know, after all of what we we we've, we've been giving him and he decides to you know, um, to say in enough, he will let go. And that happened three days ago when we said, Lord, ikaw na bala. Hindi na ako makipag-agawan. I will not battle with you. I will not push and pull through. Um, this child, this child is yours. If you want to take him, just take him now. Na hindi pa masyadong hirap yung katawan. Hindi pa nag-fail lahat ng organs, right? We, 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 we've surrendered Alex already. <laughs> But, uh, after a day or two, um, all the results for liver, kidney, heart, lungs ni Alex were all very positive. And when we say positive, positive in a way that he could hold the medicines that that will be given to to him there is an elevated enzymes on his liver right now obviously kasi ang dami talagang gamot na pinibigay kay Alex ngayon there are about 15 medicines and some of these medicines are being used to to cure cancer hanggang doon na po sa level na yun si Alex um so lalo pang pinabababa yung immunity. The the theory is that if they lower down the immunity, the B cells in itself that replicates and that causes the the immunity to go haywire will slow down or stop. So yun yung theory nila na if ibababa isusuppress nila yung uh, yung immunity ni Alex furthermore that will help him uh, direct um, this this cells not to reproduce anymore kasi parang parang sinasabi na wala ka na, hindi ka na dapat nagre-replicate wala ka nang pinapatay by the way the HHV6 virus ang medication nun is viral um, antiviral uh, medicine um Ang hirap po i-pronounce nung name nung gawot. So, forgive me. But, um, it was supposed to be taken for 14 days only. Uh, we were lucky na nag tap kami ng day one nung uh, napasok kami sa ospital. Uh, kasi there is a bigger chance daw of um, arresting it and mapatay yung virus na yun. So, um, very, ano din, very aggressive din yung doctor namin sa UERM. Uh, what he did was, instead na 14 days lang niya binigay yung medicine, he extended it to 21 days. Ngayon, is there another test to to facilitate if the virus is not done? This is where our frustration are, are, are starting, simply because some of these tests are not available in the Philippines. We could only make those tests in Singapore, the nearest in Asia, or in the US. So we were just left to the physical manifestation if the virus is already subsided or nawala na ba siya. Uh, simply because we cannot send the samples, the blood samples of Alex, or the loop, sorry, the the uh, fluid ulit sa, sa 
spine ni Alex. You cannot send it to Singapore uh, because that will cost us around 150 to 200,000 um, and that takes about 3 weeks to also uh, receive back. Um, and there is no medical facility in the Philippines that actually could coordinate it. We need to coordinate it ourselves. So, for those that will be able to uh, know, understand, and listen to this video, uh, if you want to help us get that sample and so forth and facilitate that, um, and you know exactly what we need, we we will be forever be indebted and grateful if you will be able to help us. Kasi we're willing to have Alex undergo another lumbar tap just to validate kung the HHV6 virus is already out of his system. But we were told that if it's still present, there are physical manifestations that we should be able to see right now like bleeding, uh, or yung mga pasa-pasa na cause noon which is fortunately wala na po si Alex after the 21 days medication um, that medicine is very costly as well um, and that is and, 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 and that is very traumatic to us kasi at the middle of the uh, at the middle of the me, ano, uh, treatment, naubusan po kami ng gamot na yun. Uh, we were just lucky that, and when I say naubusan, naubusan ng uh, IV form, kasi nasa IV po yun, para daw diretso kaga dun sa system niya. Uh, pero meron pong tablet form yun. There's a tablet form of that medicine. And uh, buti na lang, a couple of days na lang siya on the treatment. Yung extension na lang yung, I don't, when he had used the tablet form. Which has the same, um, same uh, unit. Kunyari 500 milligrams, the same 500 milligrams. Pero um, tablet form siya. Liquid, ginagawa siya liquid pinapa, ano po, pinapadaan po sa NGT ni Alex. Oh, I forgot about the NGT. So, after, let's say, siguro mga after a week, when Alex is already at the hospital, he needs to have an NGT. It's a tube uh, from the nostril down, diretso po sa stomach ni Alex, so that Alex could eat. Kasi, uh, Alex already lost his ability to eat on his own. He was actually chewing and we we thought gutom siya, ang chuchu siya. Um, pero it's just basically part of the NMDAR um, anti-immune encephalitis symptoms. Kasama po pala yung chewing na yun uh, sa symptoms niya. Pero he had lost his ability to eat. On, on his own. Kaya kailangan siya mag-tube. Uh, he's on liquid uh, food uh, or nutrition uh, right now. So, lahat po ng medication niya na kailangan i-ingest at hindi IV form, doon na po pinapadaan sa NGT. Pagkatapos po ng NGT, as I mentioned, uh, we were lucky na meron na pong uh, nakakyu kami kasi sa CCU or ICU, na ICU na po si Alex noon after uh, doon na po inintubate, yung ventilator niya nilagay because he had lost his ability to breathe on his own um, and because he was really chewing, biting and so forth uh, naglalaway po siya or the saliva or the secretion is uh, building up so, marami po siyang phlegm or mucus na na build So, he needs to be uh, sanctioned from time to time. So, sinasuction po yung laway niya, yung saliva niya here. And the tube, the ventilator tube actually helps him then to stop yung pag-flow pag ng saliva na yun, Which is sometimes bloody because... Unfortunately, on his second seizure and the other seizures that had happened, he had damaged his tongue, both left and right uh, tongue niya. Uh, he has lacerations on his lips then. And then he actually lost two of his front uh, teeth. 
uh, we were lucky na natanggal siya ng buo uh, with the roots and you will be wondering bakit 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 nangyari yon i cannot begin to describe to you how powerful yung yung biting niya and that is uncontrollable as in talaga pang as in wide wide mouth I para po siyang <laughs> jokingly aside ginagawa na lang po namin pinagtatawan na lang namin mag-asawa sabi namin kumakain ng burger kasi ganun kalaki laki talaga nung ano niya nung biting niya um, sometimes sabi namin oh baka nuggets yung kinakain kasi maliit lang yung ang um, pagchuchu niya pero that is so painful sabi namin sana wag majolak sabi ko anak yes masakit no painful kasi pag meron siyang very very small time of ano very very small time to be conscious <laughs> gusto niya hawakan yung and although nakatali siya pero ginagano niya na masakit na yung jaw niya <laughs> imagine niyo kayo as in mag mag constant kayong mag open ng mouth di ba masakit alam ko how painful that is and just going back to the saliva bloody saliva niya na pwede, ipa, pwede pumasok dito um, yun yung reason ko bakit ventilator na muna siya um, para din maiwasan yung mga other ano pa niya, other possible infections that is being caused by the saliva secretion uh, in itself um, unfortunately in the next couple of weeks we were told I could never, I could never, ano to, I could never, uh, pronounce. Um, ita triak, uh, tra, tracheostomy. Uh, daw siya. That is the opening here in the neck or trachea, or yung windpipe natin, uh, to allow air to fill the lungs. Kasi the, the tube, the, venti the, the ventilator tube right now, um, obviously, mayroon lang hangganan yun. Uh, we were given two weeks to three weeks, then we need to pull that out and then replace for tracheostomy. Uh, um and that and then the purpose of that really is to allow Alex to have oxygen to the lungs directly and normally this is given to uh people who's unable to bleed on their own um there's a tube directly here um but we will make that decision in the next couple of days uh we were trying to buy time uh hopefully um, the treatment, the second line treatment that Alex is on, uh, will give us some positive results so that we, we, we do not end up having that cryostomy simply because, um, while that helps him breathe, uh, there are also, uh, other consequences of having that. He will have hard time speaking and we're hoping that you know, in in the time of his uh, recovery, makasalita siya kasi ang worry namin is lalo siya magpanik, but di siya nakakasalita, right? Um, but we will see if what decisions we will be making in the next couple of days. Um, there are questions na ano mga treatments ang ginawa. Uh, there are um, there are two line of treatments that are given the first line is really steroids heavy steroids um ginawa po namin yan kay alex that's the first line um so sa first line po there are three uh three steps or three treatments uh high steroids that is given for five days um and then nag ivig po kami we could actually opt out to plasma exchange uh, but plasma exchange is invasive. Uh, diretso po dito sa cateroidal line natin, sa main line po, main ar artery line po natin. And ang the way they have described it is parang nagdadialysis ka kasi parang ipifilter yung blood in exchange to the new healthy plasma. 
pero uh, meron po yung isa ang ang tawag nila is IVIG uh, IVIG is not invasive uh, as the word in itself it's an IV it's it's true uh, suero po natin uh, but this is called intravenous immunoglobin um, yun po ay pulled antibody from uh, thousands and thousands of blood donors and that is formed in an in an IV form that is given to Alex um, that in itself cost a 700,000 uh, pesos uh, that is for 5 days mahal po yung gamot uh, and then after po no, no first line yung second line po which is we are here right now is rituximab rituximab is um is the second line choice for treatment for autoimmune uh ang ano po niya is it causes the b cells depletion uh, targeting CD20 cells. Ito po yung pinapatay or hindi pinapatay pa parang sinosuppress niya uh, so that the the autoimmune will behave. Uh, the way the doctors were describing it sa level ng thinking namin is think of it as there is a civil war inside Alex where in the immune the Im the cells of Alex is replicating and fighting on its own. Parang naglalaban sila doon na dapat wala naman na nilalabanan. So, uh, sabi niya, um, the therapy that significantly started or earlier in patients uh, with rituximab is higher uh, in terms of recovery. So, we're hoping that uh, that that stays true to Alex kasi we also are seeing that Alex is very um, resistant to some of the medications in fact there is one story when he needs to go to MRI so tinurukan po siya ng pampakalma or pampa sedate sedation para po makakuha ng magandang MRI result uh, very resistant po si Alex hindi po siya tinalaban uh, in other words, so I hope that hindi po siya maging resistant to retoximab and the second line treatment ma-accept po ng body niya. So, ano po yung mga uh, possible signs na tinatanggap na ng katawan niya yung retoximab? Uh, our hope is that the constant biting yun na lang po ngayon ang meron siya yung constant biting uh, we call it agitation uh, symptoms biting yung kamay niya po yung flexing po ng kamay niya the way I am described is showing my hands right now ganito po talaga as in um, nagtutwist talaga yung kamay niya and this is happening very frequently to Alex so you could just imagine kung gano po pwedeng madamage yung kamay niya some of the some of the patients po that uh, we were researching was not able to write na uh, back kasi sobra daw po talagang ano, kasama po siya sa, talaga sa, ano niya, sa mga physical symptoms na pinapakita nila. So just going back to rituximab, nasa rituximab stage na po kami. So, um, uh, line of treatment uh, pagkatapos po ba ng rituximab there, there's other line of treatment pa we were honestly told there is one more um, but this is yung chemotherapy uh, but unfortunately dahil walang tumor si Alex walang papatayin yung ano uh, yung pang chemo niya we don't know what's the next step after rituximab. And that is where our frustration or losing of hope is rooting from yung not knowing what to do next, right? Kasi parang after rituximab, meron pang isa yung cyclopos 
Pimide. I don't know if I pronounce it correctly. Pero, we were told na parehas lang po sila. Magkailang, magkaiba lang po ng, ng pangalan. Pero, parehas lang din po ng ginagawa. Parang, walang, walang bearing kung uulitin o ibibigay pa po namin yun. And the rest is really we're just relying on how Alex will take all the medicines. Alam ko po napakapa nitong video na to and some of your questions were not answered. Um, I have tried my best to, to explain it so that you know and understand how hard our situation is right now. Uh, I also want to take this opportunity to really thank, sincerely thank all our family members, our our friends, colleagues, uh, even those that are stranger to us. I know that you've sent prayers, you have financial help, you, you have sent us word of encouragement and we'll continue to do it. We beg you, please include us on our prayers, on your prayers, I mean. Um, we are going to build, uh, we're trying to build the GoFundMe account for Alex. Um, our, our hospital bills is piling up. This is one of the frustrating things because whether pr private or public health insurance does not cover encephalitis, um, we're hoping uh, that the Philippine government will focus on this one. There's another type of encephalitis in the Philippines that are being focused on, which is the Japanese encephalitis. Ito po ay nanggagaling sa isang uh, type ng mosquito uh, bite, and that is the viral infection that's the trigger for the encephalitis. Uh, wala po kaming nakitang literature or any baseline guidance on autoimmune encephalitis, most especially for the NMDAR. Uh, wala rin po kami nakuhang any literature for HHV6. We were told that Alex is the first in the Philippines. That's how rare um, and unfortunate and unlucky my, my son is uh, to, to get this. Kasi siya daw po yung una yata in the Philippines. Um, kasi wala pong statistics um that that helps us at least understand um and help him to get you know to get treated um maraming maraming salamat po we we're, we're very thankful di pa po tapos we're not we're not even near the end if there is an end to this one uh but i'm doing this and i will be doing series of of this video to educate this time and probably advocate we will self-advocate uh, you know diagnosis treatment uh, gaps in the system the health system that we have in the philippines uh, i am never political in my life we were never political in our life but i guess if god purpose for us is to speak about this, use our platform, use our your connections to bring light to this disease or illness. If this is our purpose, we will do it. No matter how painful it is, it will be painful. Um, I hope our next video will be, you know, a story about survivor in 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 Alex being a survivor of uh, of this disease. Uh, I I hope and pray that will be you know the next story that we will tell you. But no matter what, we sincerely sincerely thank all of the help that is being given to us. Maraming 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 salamat po. Alam ko po, marami pa po kami tulong na hihilingin. Kasi po, wala po talagang amount or degree of of help that we know we could we could reach we could reach out for for all of you. Alam ko po, tutulong at tutulong po kayo. Dalating ang tulong. Uh, for those that are sending me, you know, uh, 
request to visit Alex at the hospital. You cannot imagine how we want all of you to go there and visit. Payakap nyo man lang kami. You share the despair with us. Pero sa ngayon po talaga, there's no way. Because Alex is isolated. The rituximab in itself is uh, uh, immunity suppressor. So, bagsak na bagsak po immunity ni Alex. In fact, uh, Alex is start starting to have skin rashes uh, because even the smallest amount of environment change will kill him. In fact, ako po pinauwi kasi I have my, my, my other son, Adam, has uh, unfortunately, nagkakaf may, may ubo siya. So, he's coughing. And I'm also, obviously, not well enough. And hindi ako pwede pumasok sa ICU. I could only see Alex through the window. Ayoko po mahawa pa siya further magkaroon ng pneumonia. In fact, munti ka na po siya magkaroon ng pneumonia. Buti na lang po na-arrest agad ng doktor niya. Um, we also want uh, to go back uh, in the future to this video to thank sincerely all the UERM doctors, the nurses, the staff. I cannot begin to imagine kung hindi kami nandito sa hospital na to. Yes, expensive po. I will not deny it. I could have brought my son to a public hospital. Pero our our fear will be probably triple or double uh, or ten times more if we're on the public hospital. No offense po. But that's the reality of our healthcare system in the Philippines. So, we're so poor in in our healthcare system. Sabi ko nga, if we if we only pursued living abroad, probably we still have a better chance of you know treating Alex. But to be quite honest and fair, the treatment line that is given to Alex right now is the same treatment line that we see uh, on all the researches that we've done um, and given in you know, in countries like Canada, Australia, or even in the US. So, parehas lang naman po. Hindi naman siya different. So, um, hindi, we're not saying na the doctors are not equipped. The doctors are equipped. It's just that the healthcare system that we have has very small baseline data. Um, ngayon ko po naiisip na sa dinabi dami po ng mga pasyente sa National Center for Mental Health and CMH ilan po kaya doon ang hindi talaga mentally ill yung hindi talaga psychiatric ang problema ilan po kaya doon ang misdiagnosed right? just imagine kung we pursued Alex to be confined in that hospital <laughs> And he will be left untreated. Hindi po namin maaaris yung totoong sakit niya, right? Kasi, iisipin na, oh, crazy, baliw, right? Just imagine, uh, my fellow Filipinos, just imagine how many thousands of Filipinos are likely to have encephalitis as a diagnosis, pero misdiagnose sila as bipolar, schizophrenic, or talagang baliw talaga, right? Simply because our government, our healthcare system is not prepared to have the right diagnosis because the diagnose to arrive to a diagnosis you have to spend millions of pesos for all the tests the test in itself costs as 1.2 million the test lang po lahat yun wala pang medicine wala pang wala pang wala pang treatment <laughs> pero we have to do it because we we do not want to leave it At that point lang, na leave it there na, ay huwag na natin gawin. Kasi mahal. We, 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 sabi ko nga, tsaka na lang namin iisipin on how to pay all of this because there is also no insurances that covers this, right? Even the insurances that we have, the health insurances that we have does not cover it. So, 
we will opt to just withdraw our insurances just to cover whatever needs to be covered. So, it's very unfortunate that our health insurances, and hindi ko na po inename ko ano itong mga health insurances natin, pero hindi po talaga covered itong encephalitis, unfortunately. Most especially this type of encephalitis. There is also no vaccine uh, to prepare. This is not to add more fear to all of us, pero unfortunately, wala rin pong vaccine to have it in it in our defense. Um, we we found a website which is the uh, national, sorry, uh, the International Encephalite, Encephalitis Society. Uh, they have a very huge literature about uh, about encephalitis um, and we were we were very thankful uh, to know that in some countries there are ongoing research and um, test that is happening uh, for real cure um, uh, about the, the illness but for now until that time comes wala po talaga. There's also a uh, research that was published um, that we've read uh, about the Philippines healthcare system about about this. Uh, nakalagay po dito and I will do that on the next video. Nakalagay po dito talaga is uh, unfortunately in the Philippines there is no there is no uh statistics other than the ones that are being published by uh, PGH uh, about about the sickness. Kasi nga, yung most of the time, hindi naman siya nadadiagnosed properly. Most of the time, misdiagnosis siya uh, na psychotic siya in nature and not, it's, it's not a neurological in nature. So, we will continue uh we will continue sharing our experiences. I hope again that yung pag-share namin on the, the next video is a video of recovery. Uh, but if it's a video about Alex leaving us, um, again, sinabi ko, sinuko na po namin si Alex kay Lord. Ayoko na po makipanagawan kasi it's either that that we are being prepared or him not able to really, you know, um, go back to us. There will be no normal. I will not say Alex will be normal again. There is no normal in this situation. Any, any encephalitis survivor will say that. But we will create the new normal for him if God allows him to still be with us. For those who are asking about our our mental state, me and Irwin and Adam, we're trying to to hold on. Um, we're not well. Uh, I will not pretend I am well. I I will not pretend that my husband is well, or my my other child is well. Um, but we're trying to live day by day. Um, with God's mercy, we will be able to live um, to live you know one day at a time um, for those of you I'm also a very religious person I believe that these are just tests of faith for us and my, our family I know after this we will come much stronger but to be quite honest with all of you, when you are in our situation, it's so silent. Silent lang po. Hindi namin narinig si God. Hindi namin narinig si God speaking to us that there is hope. However, we see it. We see it. We we rather see it. We rather we rather him show it to us. There are good people that are talking to us, uh, especially the doctors. 
that are talking to us, giving us some glimpse of hope. But we're also appreciative of them, you know, talking to us in all honesty and truthfulness na if we need to be prepared or what. There are very good people around us. Some are ex- unexpectedly helping us. Very good people. Um, and I know those are, you know, sent by God. Uh, I wish, ang wish lang namin is, we'll be able to be able to share this testimony of faith. Um, but forgive us if sometimes we do not respond to any of your messages or we we have a delay on responses because sometimes no amount of words are are we able to absorb hindi namin na absorb yung words ninyo hindi namin na absorb hindi dahil matgas ulo namin or what it's just that sometimes it's a blank space in our head din. Hindi, hindi, hindi namin makumprehen what is happening. So, believe that when the ti- the right time comes, we'll be able to further appreciate, you know, send back our words of gratitude to everyone. Uh, just give us time. Just give, just, just, just give us time. Um, pasensya na po dun sa mga tao nakakabasa ng Facebook rants ko. <laughs> um, pwede nyo naman po ako i-mute for some time. <laughs> uh, if it's really depressing. Um, but, thank you very much for those that are supporting us. Um, maraming maraming salamat po. If this video helps you um, to better understand Uh, us, me, my husband, and, and, you know, Adam, our youngest son, thank you very much po. Maraming maraming salamat po. We will keep updating you on Alex's condition. Please keep on praying for us. Maraming maraming salamat po.